It's got a slow start, but here's Pictionary. Pictionary. So the general idea when I'm finishing a record is to end it on a bit of a tilt and give it a bit of a give it a bit of a lean on its way out. Um, I noticed that one band that comes to mind is Who's Do, the kind of proto emo um, punk band, and bands like you know Fugazi and stuff. Growing up, there would there would, would frequently be these kind of end tracks that would be instrumentals or these weird sort of collages, um, and I've generally done that on a lot of my records. Is that you set something up and then go through it, and then at the end there's just a little bit of little bit of a twist for dessert. There's a little bit of a a little bit of a jump at the end, um, and this kind of uh, predicts a lot of stuff that ended up on Drop Shadow, the next record. Um, so yeah, what have we got? Pictionary, the uh, the early 90s board game, uh, the game of quick draw. Uh, the design itself of Pictionary is really cool. It's kind of um, great sort of minimal 90s, um, 90s design. Um, and a lot of the sort of mental imagery came to mind on this uh working on this was things like mist the um interactive cd-rom game and interactive cd-rom games in general this kind of uh a lot of a lot of sort of exploration of architecture and and materiality in 3d graphics you know things you know marble big thing in vaporwave all these kind of you know procedural skies or procedural textures and kind of uh reflectivity uh, the song's sort of more or less about mental images um, for me. The uh, this kind of ostinato figure thing. If I can find a place where it's actually loud, because I've used a lot of volume automation to get this fade in. But this this kind of thing is Steve Reich's Six Marimbas, but a very sort of snippetized version, which isn't. Um, which isn't an, an eight note phrase, it's more of like a, a, a three note phrase. Um, but I was listening to a lot of Steve Reich and a lot of American minimalists um, at the end of this record. Um, we've got a jump in patches. We go from uh, kind of kind of a marimba to a vibraphone. And it's this kind of reveal. It's like a just mentally it, it, it the door opens even though the 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 patches themselves go from like bright and dense to sort of simple there's a kind of tension release aspect to it which i find really compelling and we have this willow classic core game one patch it's got a weird pitch envelope on the release at the end of the end of the notes you can hear a little So some sort of basic, like I was sort of getting back to basics with the musical material. You can see this whole willow section is the same contrary pair of notes. It's got you've got a bit of contrary motion that's kind of developed on by having this rising thing underneath it. Um, and I think the contrary motion. So you have one note going down, while another goes up, or vice versa. And I think this works really well with the pitch envelope at the end of Willow having this pitch rise at the end of it. So it's almost like it's contrary voicing played with a contrary voice. Uh, it's this kind of uh, this whole this whole piece of music's about like enigmas, you know, and kind of mirages. Uh, this kind of this kind of thing. Also, it's very very quiet, and I should have made it louder in the album, but. Let's turn up the volume automation. We have a really nice track of uh, water sounds. 
just trying to go f- like full and on cheesy ambient. Not dolphin noises, but just, you know. I think New Age music's gotten a bit of a hard rap. That's cool. Um, and why not? You know, why not? Uh, why not write music with respect to nature? The awesome force of nature. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we got this 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 repeating repeating arpeggio figure thing all the way through. So once that's sort of set up in the listener's mind, you sort of begin to forget about it, and that's kind of minimalist music doing what it says on the tin. And then over the top, we have this sort of um, very mathematical. Well, we'll take it off solo here. Um, we'll come back. So we're going between. A natural and B natural. So there's the question and then there's the answer. As Hans Zimmer would put it. And then we have this kind of same question and answer dynamic but with contrary motion in a lot of it so it's kind of mirrored as some notes go up others go down and this second voice is a lot is a lot quieter so this idea that it's like optical illusions that it's simultaneously going up and down You can hear it when this uh, this kind of apex, this sort of or this sort of cadence. This has just been inverted by hand, and, and the scale just just sort of felt out. And then drops an octave. So it's the same same phrase repeated, but dropping an octave, making it a bit more languid, making it a bit more kind of slower, more weighty. And then underneath you had these great, I, I've only just rediscovered this and I completely forgot that I, I don't remember even programming these, which is pretty strange, but um, these kind of pluck string um, chords they kind of sound to me like uh, post-punk, like a bit like Wire or even The Cure or something like that. This kind of British um, JCM chorus, jazz chorus amp uh, type clean guitar, clean guitar tone. But this this is just done with um, Corgi One. It's just an acoustic guitar patch through um, through Guitar Rig Four Ensemble. But I like how this is it's just kind of kind of buried in there. notes from Willow. I'm guessing the, the the fact that this is called Willow is probably a reference to the movie Willow, which probably many people would, won't know about, but you know, the one they filmed in New Zealand a bit. <laughs> but this kind of low synth. Um, also a bit like Vangelis Blade Runner patch. So the whole thing is kind of questioning and it's kind of, uh, it's tense and sort of static. And then at the end you have this sort of enigmatic flute figure that just goes. Also there's a sort of cool, um, there's a cool delay automation from this plugin. I'm running the demo because we can't get it anymore uh bbe2 timer bad design for a pedal uh what were you thinking but uh, those were the days um yeah so this this delay time is um between a, a dual delay 
to give this kind of mix of this sort of I, I, I thought it was like bird sound like a tui um, with this kind of the pitch inflection this kind of wobbling It's kind of ending ending the whole album on a little question and ending the whole the ending the piece on a question to end the album on a question um, just to just tap it into a different kind of territory at the last minute and kind of effective and sort of I knew I was going to write an ambient record next and that ended up being drop shadow which is sort of half ambient but um and nice to be able to try to embody that and then sort of pull it off um, oh, this could have gone in the middle of drop shadow for sure of course more slap bass from multi bass this time not slap and thump which has got a slightly different velocity map but slap at the top and then kind of cycles through different um, timbers like slap and thump but a bit more synthy but uses the same slap bass from slap and thump on the top end of the velocity map. Uh, you can see the slap bass on 118 to 127. Um, but yeah, it's got synth bass underneath it too, so it's a bit more thicker than slap and thump. Another piece that was um, influential on this was um, I found on a mixtape, Any Minute by Steve Tibbetts. It's like a piece with kalimba and violin loops through delay bit more kind of obscure uh, sort of uh, I think 80s ambient music um, yeah again if I was rewriting something like this I, mean, I would probably get a little more uh, floral with the harmonics maybe modulated a bit more it's it is just based around one inverted d minor chord well basically it's built around this this doom 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 um rising bass note and one chord but those are my proclivities these days i was probably much more happy to just listen through it and go that sounds good And at the bottom of the session, we have this SRC 64K WMA track, which is sample rate convert, 64 kilobit Windows Media Audio. So um, the other idea was to end it super lo-fi. Um, this is a an export that's a 64 kilobit Windows Media file, um, then re-imported back to WAV to give give the artifacts or movie here a little bit. You can hear that like the upper mid range is like crusty. But it lost too much impact. Um, the whole of Eyeliner's high fashion mood music is 96 kilobit mp3s so I was still um, working with sample rate reduction from Codex as a kind of a way of mastering um, just to see what it sounds like. Almost kind of not enough artifacts in there, but it sounds better. It sounds better full. You lo lose the low end. And but yeah, that's Pictionary. Um, a little ending on a little ambient tune. 